far-right Republicans like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates shamelessly spew white nationalist ideology and talking points, their political message is beyond extreme. But Green and Gates are more or less carnival barkers. They're in it for the self-promotion. The bigger danger comes from House Republicans like Paul Gosar. Gosar tends to fly under the radar because he's not as loud a talker as the others. But he's a doer. And the doing makes him far more of a threat. In the weeks before the Capitol insurrection, Paul Gosar told Trump supporters this. Once he conquered the Hill, Donald Trump has returned to being president. He's been accused of being one of the organizers of the Stop the Steal rally that sparked the insurrection. I was the person who came up with the January 6th idea with Congressman Gosar. On January 6th, Paul Gosar posted photos from the Trump rally that turned into a violent mob. And now Gosar has fully embraced white nationalist leader Nick Fuentes in what the New York Times calls the most vivid example of the Republican Party's growing acceptance of extremism. Nick Fuentes has been accused of Holocaust denial and has said disgusting things like, the founders never intended for America to be a refugee camp for non-white people. Gosar was the keynote speaker at a conference hosted by Nick Fuentes in February. The GOP congressman has even written to the FBI to defend Fuentes. And last week, Nick Fuentes claimed to be fundraising for Paul Gosar. Today, Twitter finally suspended Fuentes but Paul Gosar continues to spread his lies and hate, using his pulpit as a member of Congress, while House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says nothing and obsesses instead over Ilhan Omar. Joining us now is Jennifer Gosar, Paul Gosar's younger sister and a very outspoken critic of the congressman, and Kurt Braddock, assistant professor in the School of Communication at American University. He's also a faculty fellow at American University's Polarization and Extremism Research and Innovation Lab. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Kurt, how dangerous is it to have elected members of the United States Congress playing footsie with Holocaust deniers and white nationalists? In fact, attending their conferences and just tweeting out their talking points. I think it's extremely dangerous. Uh, you rightly said earlier that Gosar is not so much a speaker, but a doer. Um, I think one of the biggest dangers of individuals like Paul Gosar it just isn't just the things that he says, uh, it's more that he thinks he doesn't say. Um, he's trying to distance himself now from Nick Fuentes and the America First movement. Um, but the fact that Nick Fuentes and the America First movement and other far-right groups think they have an ally and an elected representative yes. in Congress, that's a huge boon for them, regardless of what Gosar says or doesn't say. Yes, it is, sadly. And Jennifer, you and your siblings first grabbed the headlines back in 2018 when you told voters in Arizona not to vote for your brother and accused him of anti-Semitism, among other things. A pretty bold move. But he's only become worse since then. I guess it must be difficult having the family name Gosar when he's the most famous one of you. Yes, it is. But it's important, no matter what the name is, to, to stand up to it in every way, shape or form. And I would agree he is a very... Um, powerful force within, you know, this type of cult fascist um, group of people, right? Paul is there. He was a big proponent of the big lie. He was constantly out at those rallies. You know, Ali Alexander isn't referring to Paul out of nowhere. I mean, there were multiple tweets back and forth between them. Nick Fuentes, which of course in Spanish, yes. Fuentes found him, right? Or source. And as a Fuente de Basura, total, you know, he is really a garbage fountain. He's a garbage source. And Paul has been there with Nick Fuentes time and again. And where's the censure? Where's explosion? Where are the criminal charges? It's awful. It is awful. Uh, Kurt, the Republican Party becomes more and more radicalized and racist as the years go by. I'm old enough to remember when it was Sarah Palin, then Michelle Bachman, then Donald Trump. And now it's QAnon supporters in Congress, white nationalists in Congress. I feel like even if the party leadership wanted to stop all this, and they don't seem to want to, they couldn't. The ship has sailed. It's too late. This is what the grand old party is now. It seems extremely difficult to do so. I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think in the wake of the Donald Trump presidency, he left a huge constituency of these individuals on the far right. And I think what we see now are individuals who are left in the Republican Party trying to scrape up those constituents. 
there are a large number of disaffected individuals who still feel as though the election was stolen. And individuals like Paul Gosar, MTG, and others, they see it as an opportunity. They see it as a political opportunity for themselves. And unfortunately, it serves both the politician to get those constituents, and it serves the far-right constituents because they get the legitimacy of having a politician on their side. Yeah. And Jennifer, no one expects Kevin McCarthy to do anything about your brother. But what about the Democrats? I feel like I hear more public criticism of Paul Gosar's role in the insurrection and the big lie from you, from his siblings, than I hear from Nancy Pelosi or any other House Democratic leader. We've been scratching our heads to try to figure that out as well. Uh, uh, Maddie, I mean, they're in every way, shape or form. That was a lynch mob that was going after Mike Pence. And it was definitely targeted at Nancy Pelosi the squad and others. Now, the squad has been, they have been outspoken in so many parts of this corrupt, you know, past four years and, and, and continuing on. But Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, I mean, honestly, where is the Democratic leadership? I really only hear from Pamela Jayapal, who's my representative here in Washington state, and they didn't take her up on the ethics charges that she, the investigation that she initiated. So, I don't know where they at. I don't know what they need. I mean, their lives were in danger. And here they are allowing one day more for Paul and his ilk to fundraise, another day more to ground in this narrative, distract with Ashley Babbitt, to distract with these other things. It continues the dialogue, yeah. it continues the narrative, and it continues the machine rolling. Every day he seems to get more extreme and there's no ethics complaints or charges, as you say. No stripping of committee assignments. We all just look at Marjorie Taylor Greene's carnival barking. Gosar goes under the radar. Kurt, the Anti-Defamation League wrote this about Nick Fuentes in a report published yesterday. Quote, Fuentes largely avoids blatant white supremacist language, instead focuses on anti-establishment thinking, targeting the GOP, mainstream media and leftists. This strategy, along with the adoption of mainstream meme culture like Pepe the Frog, allows the America First movement to attract younger mainstream conservatives who are then exposed to the group's extremist ideology. That is... An apt description of what is happening across parts of the right, especially online. I'm guessing that's what you see in your research. And it's popular, sadly, with a lot of people. Absolutely. Uh, we actually just finished a study at the Polarization and Extremism Innovation Lab that found that individuals who are exposed to these kinds of memes and these kinds of messages through what we call subversive kinds of outlets are more likely to be persuaded by right wing propaganda. Uh, so these sorts of messages are getting in front of vulnerable eyes and they are appealing to them. They might not seem overtly racist or yes. white supremacist at first, but they absolutely turn in that direction. And our research has shown these individuals are vulnerable to persuasion by right wing propaganda.